everyone, my name is Lori Monday with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission and today we're here to talk about one of my favorite reptiles, the American Alligator. Before we start with just the American Alligator, I want to talk about a few things that make um, reptiles, reptiles. So when we think of reptiles, what kinds of animals do you think of? We probably think of snakes, uh, turtles, lizards, and alligators which begs the question, do we have crocodiles in Arkansas? We'll give you a few seconds to think about that, but no, we do not have crocodiles in Arkansas, we have alligators. Now, what makes these groups of animals, um, what characteristics bring them all together? And so there are three main characteristics that reptiles display, and I want you to think about what those characteristics are. Some of you might think of uh, eggs. So reptiles lay eggs. Uh, they, they're going to lay soft-shelled eggs, which is a little bit different than what birds lay, but they're going to lay soft-shelled eggs. And then another characteristic that some of you might have said is that they're cold-blooded. Now, depending on what age everyone is, uh, we can, for now, interchange cold-blooded, but another very good term to learn is thermoregulation. And so, uh, Reptiles are ectotherms, which means they're, or you could say that they're ectothermic, but that's about the same thing as saying cold-blooded. But what does that really mean? Is our cold, is our blood actually cold? So try to think of what uh, cold-blooded actually means. And one good example that I have is if you think of a turtle. So I have a turtle shell here, and when the turtle is outside, and it gets too hot. It's out on the limb and it splays its arms and it's soaking up the sun. Can it become too hot? And they, the answer is yes. So when it becomes too hot, what can the turtle do? Try to think about what they will do. And so one thing is that a turtle can go inside of its shell. Another thing is that the turtle can jump off the log and go into the water to cool down. And then uh, another option would be maybe finding a tree with some shade. So their blood does get warm. Have you ever seen a turtle outside and it just starts sweating? Right, so that's, that's not what they do, but they do need to regulate their temperature. Now think of the opposite thing. What happens when it's cold outside, maybe it's snowing, you walk outside, you as a mammal, when you go outside and you're cold, what does your body do? right so not like you can go put on a sweater but what does your body do and so if you think about it when you're cold all of a sudden you start shaking and that's called shivering and that's what we do to warm up and if you think about it put your hands together and you can start to rub them as fast as you can and it's going to create this heat in there it causes friction that's how we heat up but do you ever see the turtle outside shivering no, right? And so what the reptiles have to do is at that point, they can get too cold, and so they have to move. They have to maybe bury in some mud, go to the warmer part of water. So uh, being ectothermic means that uh, their blood temperature is regulated based on the environment and the characteristics around them. So that's what it means to be cold-blooded. So we know reptiles lay soft-shelled eggs. They're also... Uh, cold-blooded and then one of the last things that we think of is that they have scales now naturally when we think of scales this might be the first thing that you think of a lot of people think of snake skin and within this skin every one of these little dots is its own scale and it comes together to make this shed right um, but then we think well do turtles have scales and we say well turtles have a shell but uh, they have a, it, it is a scale, it's a special scale called a scute, 
and each one of these bony plates is a special skew. So if we were to break this shell apart, these would be the scutes that make up the turtle's shell. So turtles do have scales. Similar to the turtle, alligators also have scales and their scutes look a little bit different like this. So um, we'll take my little baby alligator here and this leathery skin up underneath it is made of all these different scutes or pl bony plates that line the back of the alligator. And then as the alligator grows, you get really large scutes. And so that's going to help the alligator with buoyancy and some thermoregulation. So they do have scales. They're just special uh, scales called scutes. I want you all to say that word. You can say the word cute and then add an S and say scute. So we know reptiles uh, are cold-blooded. They lay soft-shelled eggs and they have scales. Now I want to focus on the American alligator, which is an animal that does live uh, throughout the state, uh, mostly towards Pettigene, WMA, and then down south Arkansas. And their range is based on the temperatures of the state, kind of when you get to the freezing temperatures. So remember, at the first of this program, we said that we do not have crocodiles in Arkansas, that we have alligators. And that's really important for us to know. Uh, what we're going to focus on today are some characteristics of alligators, but we want to point out that, you know, I want you to think about what you think the biggest problem that we have with alligators in Arkansas. Is it that they bite? Is it that they're coming into our territory? What do you think the biggest problem is? And what we found is that people mess with them. So we get a lot of uh, alligator nuisance calls or complaints because people will harass alligators or feed them or do things that they really shouldn't do. And it leads to some problems. And so in order for me to best explain this, I like to kind of um, tell a story. So the way that I like to explain about alligators in Arkansas is by telling a story. So this is um, the skeleton of an American alligator's head. And we can point out some very interesting features. Uh, one thing that we can see is that the nostrils are at the very front of the head. Um, we can see that in actuality, when the jaw is closed, you're only gonna see one row of teeth. Whereas in crocodiles, you would see both rows of teeth. And that's because when the alligator shuts its mouth, it actually has this space that sits in the top mandible. Uh, another interesting thing about the jaw is that alligators are not opening their mouth with both um, jaws. The way that the muscles work is that the bottom jaw is what opens and then closes. And the muscle that does that is very, very strong. So um, if an alligator were to have its mouth closed, you've seen that people will hold it closed. And that's because the muscle that opens that jaw is not as strong. It's pretty weak um, in comparison. However, if an alligator's mouth is open, you don't see us holding it open, right? And that's because the muscle that closes the jaw is very strong, like a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch. So you wouldn't ever wanna do that. Um, but you'll also notice these rows of teeth. Now, something that's interesting about alligators is that um, they can actually, their teeth grow their entire lifetime. And so what happens is as they grow, and tend to wear out, um, those teeth will fall out and they're hollow on the inside. And so you could find an alligator tooth, um, but because of that, they can have up to 3,000 teeth in their lifetime. So a lot of teeth that are gonna wear out. Uh, on this skeleton, you'll also notice that they do have ears, which is gonna be important with the story that I'm gonna tell. Um, okay. So I want to take this alligator, and this is a, a mama alligator. I'll be I'll be the mom, and you guys are all going to be the babies. Okay. So I'm a mama alligator, and um, it's spring, which means that remember I am ectothermic or cold blooded. So I just came out of winter. Uh, alligators don't eat between November and March because it's really too cold for them to digest their food. So I am 
hungry. And what do I eat? So things that we eat are turtles, um, snakes, fish, anything that's small enough that we can really get in their jaws. And so I'm hungry. I come out of, um, we'll call it hibernation for now, and I'm searching for food. I live in the wetlands or marshes, and so I'm going to be eating. And then I find out that I'm going to be a mom, and I'm very excited. So what do alligators do, right? So we know that they lay eggs. Can, can an alligator, maybe four or 500 pounds, can she just go sit on her eggs like birds might do to keep them warm? And the answer is no, right? And so what alligators will do is they will build a nest. Now, a lot of people think that they will take their claws and dig into the ground to build the nest. But what they actually do is they build um, about a three foot by four foot nest on top of the ground. And so if I used a few of my props here, what they're doing is they're pulling in all of this stuff and they're building a nest on top of the ground to build it up. And you can actually see those mounds. So I'm still eating in the pond and then I come and I take my fingers uh, and I'm gonna pull all of this stuff into this mound. Now while I'm doing it, what's really special for um, ecologically is that I'm building homes for other animals while I'm creating uh, this nesting site. And so I take it, I dig a hole, and I'm going to lay about 30 to 45 eggs in this nest. And then I'm gonna cover it back up. And then I'm gonna go eat. So I go back to the pond. Let's say the pond is right here and I'm eating. Uh, another special thing is that a turtle might come along and dig its own little hole and lay its eggs in the nest for me to watch for the season. So, okay, so we stay in the nest until, you know, July or August. And then as the baby alligators begin to hatch, they come out and they're about six to eight inches long. And something really cool is that when they come out, they're going to make a noise like ooh, ooh, um, or something similar to that. So they're going to be calling for mom. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then mom is going to hear using those ears that we talk about. So she comes back and what she'll do is she'll give them like a cute little alligator hug and she's going to put them in her mouth. Okay, so she's going to scoop them up with that bottom jaw. And then she's going to take little baby alligators back to the pond and drop them off. Maybe a little bit more gently than that, but you get the point, right? So she puts them in the pond and that's what she's going to do. She's going to pick them up and take them over there. Now, it's really interesting because uh, female alligators will grow to about seven to nine feet long in Arkansas, whereas the male alligators are gonna get a little bit larger, let's say 11 to 12 feet long. Uh, and when they grow, their color is very dark. So they're something that we call melanistic, which means that they darken with age. So when the babies are born, they actually tend to have a lot of coloration. So you have these uh, horizontal stripes, maybe some splotches on the side. Why do you think the babies are born with all these colorations, whereas the adults um, are very dark in color? And so what I want you to think about is this is very small. So if you're in a pond or a wetland, what could eat this animal? And so think about it. I mean, a turtle could come up and eat it, another alligator, um, snakes, fish, uh, maybe some fur bears, you know, some raccoons. So all kinds of things can eat this alligator. Whereas your nine foot alligator, you know, she's just really saying, I mean, she has this handled, right? And so that's another good reason why they have their scutes. Remember that word scute or their special scales, you know, that lines the back of them. So if they're out in the pond and something grabs them, that's really going to protect you know, the outer layer of that animal. Okay, so babies are now in the water, and let's say all 45 of you guys hatched. You guys are all the babies. So you're swimming in the water, and you're trying to find food. So you're able to eat some dragonflies or some little fish, but then also you're trying not to get eaten. 
And so you're going to use that camouflage to, uh, to hide you while you're looking for food. But then you're also using that camouflage um, to hide so you don't get eaten as well. But unfortunately, some of you are going to get picked off. So maybe a few of you over there to the back of the room, you guys are going to get eaten by a big old catfish. A couple of you, you know, a, a diamondback water snake just picked you off, ate a few of you. Another alligator got you. Let's see, one of you in the middle, you guys got eaten by, let's see, a bass. Bass will get you guys too. And so out of all 45 of you, only about six to nine of you are going to survive. Okay, and so this is where it gets interesting. So mom's still kind of there protecting you, which is unique to alligators that they show some sort of parental care for about a year, but she can't save all of you. We have our baby alligator and it can eat dragonflies and fish. Mom's kind of watching, but then all of a sudden, you know, one of the baby alligators gets away. And so now I wanna tell you a story and I'm gonna invite my friend Tara up here to tell this story. Okay, so first thing that I want y'all to think about is what do you think is the biggest problem that we have with alligators in Arkansas? And then we'll tell you a little story. So we have our little baby alligator who has now wandered off and it comes up to a human, one of us, and this is gonna be Tara. And so he comes up to Tara. And what do we do when we find little baby wild animals? Think about that. And generally what we do is that we mess with them or we take them home or we feed them. So little baby alligator comes up and Tara's like, oh my gosh, cute little baby alligator. And she decides to feed it. So go ahead and he's like, mm -hmm. and it's real tastes really good. And she keeps on feeding it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, it did, it's not that difficult to find food. And now he's just gonna keep on going up to Tara to get food. And if he wanders off to anyone else, when he sees that person, he's gonna think food, and then maybe give him like a little uh, Vienna sausage, mm, that's so good. Now here's what the problem is. Remember that our alligators hatch from an egg, because that's one of the characteristics of reptiles. And when they're born, they're about six to eight inches long, so they're really small. Now Tara has fed him, and he's starting to grow a little bit. And Tara, I'm gonna have you hold that alligator. Now, your alligator grows. Now, if your alligator is just a couple feet long, are you still gonna feed him? And the answer is probably yes. So, maybe someone over here, go give him some fish or some mice, and we continue to feed him, and our alligator's growing, but maybe now, our alligator has gotten a little bit bigger, right? So, you can see the teeth are coming out and forming, He's really getting used to us. And what's happening every time we feed this alligator? What is really, what are we doing? And the answer is, is that he's becoming used to us. He thinks that he's a pet when in fact he's not. And he's coming up to people for food and we call that becoming habituated. So they're really getting used to people, which causes a problem. So then I'm gonna have you hold that. And maybe the alligator's about four to six feet long and we think, are we still gonna feed this little baby alligator? And people are getting to the point where we're about here. So at about eight feet long, female alligators in Arkansas, and then we have our 11 foot alligators. So now think about this. If you come up to your alligator, well now it looks like this. And are we gonna continue to feed this alligator? And the answer is no. And so here's what happens in Arkansas. We have alligators who have become habituated, which means that they've gotten used to people. And then we get nuisance calls and they get, you know, sent to a coordinator or a wildlife officer. And what happens with these animals is that they either have to be put down or we have to find a place for them to go. And it's very difficult to do that. And so while we think that we're helping wild animals by feeding them, we're in fact actually causing them harm because it causes them to become used to us. And then um, that can be dangerous for us and then that wild animal may have to be put down. And so really the biggest problem that we have in Arkansas with alligators is people harassing them or feeding them and that's something that we don't need to do. So now what I'd like to do is show you a live alligator and maybe get a, you know, some, 
uh, live footage of what a live alligator looks like, some of those characteristics that we talked about. Okay, so now we're here with a live American alligator. Uh, just really quickly, the story behind him is that he was a rescue, um, and it's a very similar story to many that I've heard, which is some kids uh, got a hold of him, brought him home, which is illegal in Arkansas, and started feeding him. And what that creates is this alligator that is very used to people, and then he was rescued and we now use him for education programs. And so we don't have this alligator for entertainment, we don't feed it for fun, uh, but he does have to stay with us, which is actually kind of sad. And so we're gonna use this to send the message to just let wild animals be wild. Okay, so some characteristics that we've already covered that I just wanna show you up close now is one thing that you can see is that this would be still considered a juvenile, which is, you know, under four to six feet. And you can see these really beautiful markings that I talked about on the sides of him. So you can see some of those orange, red colors, a little bit yellow on the scutes there. And so that's gonna serve for what purpose did we talk about? And that's right, it's so it can be better camouflaged in the water. Then you're gonna notice these bumps that go all the way down the alligator's back. And so remember your special scale called a scute and now you can really see how each one of those bumps underneath that layer of skin are actually scutes that help to protect that animal and then as it grows you'll get a really large uh, scute so we can see the coloration we can see the scutes another thing that we had talked about is especially with the female is that um, she had to build this nest and so what's really interesting about alligators is that they have these webbed feet. And so in between those toes, you're gonna see these little flaps of skin. And I often ask, you know, what do you think the webbing is for? And so a lot of people think that it's for swimming, which it does help with. But what we found is that a lot of times it's for wading. And so if you think about it, the alligator's in the water and he's looking for food and he's moving slowly. So he takes those feet and he wades and he just pushes through that water using that webbing to help him. And then you can take those webs and that could be what you build your nest with as well. So really interesting about that. Uh, one thing that you'll notice are those teeth have really grown around the mouth. And so I talked about how you can only see one layer of teeth and you can see that here with him. If he were to open this lower jaw, um, you could see the second layer. You see nostrils right up front, eyes right on top of the head. This is an important adaptation, right? So that they can be in the water, looking above the water, seeing their prey, seeing what's around them. They could still smell. And then these small little flaps right here behind the eye, these can actually close in the water. And those were important because those are its ears. And so remember when mom comes and the baby's calling for mom, ooh, 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 she really needs to be able to hear really well and vice versa. So those are the ear flaps there. Something else I like to point out is at the bottom of the jaw, you'll notice all these really pretty black speckles. And those are actually sensory organs that help him to find his food. So yes, smell comes into play and sight, but uh, when you see an alligator eating, often it'll do this, and it's using uh, those sensory organs to find food as well. So one of the last things that I wanna show you is they have a really special uh, characteristic. We call it a third eye. Um, but it's called a nictitating membrane. So if you think about this, you have two eyelids. Here's your top eyelid and your bottom eyelid. So go ahead and blink for me. So we're gonna blink. Well, um, the alligator has a third eyelid and it's a membrane. So if you think about Arkansas waters, they're kind of murky and dark, there's things in them. And so he needs a protective layer when he goes under to find food. And so above the water, you see the two eyelids, but when he goes underwater, this third eyelid, which is a membrane, will come across from the inside corner of the eye 
and slide to the outside and that's its special covering. So something that you could relate that to is if you go swimming and you wear goggles, why do you wear goggles? And you do that to protect your eyes. So something similar to that. So I'd really love to show you that nictitating membrane. So I'm gonna close his eyes. And you can see that membrane slide across. And so that's that special membrane that helps it to see underwater. So as you can see, alligators are actually very interesting. Um, they do live in our state and there's a lot of really cool things about them. However, we want to let wild animals be wild. We want to let them live in the wild. If you come across an alligator in Arkansas, it's okay to take a picture of it from far away to view it, but you want to leave that animal alone. Uh, it is illegal to have uh, an alligator, uh, a private alligator, or as a pet in Arkansas. Uh, additionally, you can hunt alligators in Arkansas during alligator season. You will have to have the correct licenses and permits. If you need more information about that, you can download our guidebook or find more information on www.agfc.com. Uh, additionally, you can find more programs like this on our virtual nature center at agfcnaturecenter.com. Again, this is Lori Monday with Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. I'm so happy to be here with y'all today. Have a good day.